Welcome to the Creative Me podcast, coming to you from Guernsey in the Channel Islands. Hello and welcome to episode 14 of the Creative Me podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's good to have you with me. In today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about some recent decisions I made concerning my website because a lot of people have asked me, well not a lot of people, but a few people have asked me questions about it. So I thought, what better way to answer than in person? on the podcast. But before I do, just a little bit of news for you. Well, it's not really news, it's more of an update on my book. Things are going well on the writing front. I've reached the stage where I think I need to actually reassess my outline because I'm writing, the writing is flowing and things are definitely going well but I don't think I'm covering things in as much detail as I'd like to and I think my outline isn't helping that. I think I've approached it as a very quick overview of topics when in fact I want to go into more detail. So I'm going to review my outline and see if I can break things down further a bit because the book is very much aimed at people new to promoting themselves online so I think that detail is necessary so it's all good it's all positive I'm getting um, words written most days I'll probably have a zero word count a couple of days coming up due to some revisions and things like that but I'm sort of realizing that that's very much part of the process so it's all heading in the right direction and ever since I made the sort of scary decision to niche down and focus on the writing, um, things have kind of all fallen into place. It's it's very interesting. I've recently taken on a freelance client. I'm doing some editorial work for him. So, um, you know, proofreading blog posts and also doing some social media stuff for him as well. That fell into my lap and only happened after I decided to focus on my niche so I've not had to market my services or anything um so that sort of says to me not that I'm a big believer in fate but it says to me that I've made the right decision and uh you know things are things are looking up so positive update from me in that respect Let's talk websites then. As this is a really short episode style podcast, I'm not going to do an in-depth Squarespace versus WordPress type episode. What I will do uh, is I will post a couple of really good blog articles that I found that compare the two products in detail. I am only going to share with you my thoughts and comments on on the two, so it's not going to be in depth. That's a little word of warning for you. So Squarespace versus WordPress. Well, Squarespace is very much a an out-of-the-box type website product but it's very sophisticated and looks really good it's not difficult for a non-techie to um, you know get a Squarespace account and set things up there's fantastic support the hosting in other words where the files for the uh, website are stored and served up to the internet the hosting is included within your monthly fee for Squarespace so it's very much packaged up sophisticated easy to use not a massive learning curve uh, you know great great support available and as you're paying a monthly fee then you're entitled to make use of that support so a great one for newbies who want a sophisticated looking website 
At the time of recording this episode, the prices for Squarespace websites work out at $12 a month for a personal site and $18 a month for a business site. The online store options are more expensive. You're looking at $26 for a basic one and $40 a month for something that's more advanced. If you're going to go for um, an annual plan, you can get a 10% discount, I understand, by using the discount code GIMME10. Just double check that online before you go ahead and use it. So based on my experience, I would say that Squarespace is worth every penny. You can get such a good looking website off the back of it and it's easy to maintain. I opted for the personal package at $12 a month. It worked out perfectly well for me um, and, and I certainly have no complaints. Uh, it's, it's a really, really good service. So why on earth did I move to WordPress then? Well, I've used WordPress before. There are two different WordPress options available to you. There's WordPress.com and WordPress.org. WordPress.org is a self-hosted version of WordPress. This means that you have to pay a hosting company to host your website. So there's a small cost involved there. I use a company called TSO Host uh, and the hosting at the moment, the package I've got costs something ridiculously cheap, like £14 a year or something like that. I'm sure I'll need to upgrade that at some point. But, you know, to get started, it's absolutely bang on. And the support I've had from them has been fantastic. So WordPress.org is an open source platform. That means that people can, uh, they have access to the code and that means that they can spend um, time and effort building templates for WordPress and building plugins, which are essentially things that extend the functionality of your website. This means there's some great, exciting extensions you can add. It's very, um, very straightforward to add a plugin that will allow you to offer, for example, online courses. Uh, you can have all sorts of different social sharing plugins. There's lots and lots of options, far more options than you'd get with Squarespace. However, because any old any old person can um, create plugins and design themes and things like that, there is always the chance that you're going to use a plugin or a theme that breaks your website. And you have to be sufficiently confident and technical to troubleshoot that. And also the WordPress platform, you know, if you're going for the self-hosted version, the, the WordPress platform is regularly updated. Sometimes if you'll update the software, you might break your website. You know, some of the plugins you're using might not play nice with that particular version of the software. It, you basically um, are responsible for your site. And for some people who aren't confident in techie stuff like that, this can be a bit scary. And that is one of the reasons I left last time. I wasn't sufficiently confident to fix my site if it broke. This is not something that many people tell you, actually. WordPress is, generally speaking, considered to be very user-friendly. There's lots and lots of support documentation online that can help you with it. But if you do, it, take my word for it, if you don't have that technical confidence to troubleshoot, then you are going to struggle with WordPress. That's how I, I feel about it at any rate. I am now a lot more confident technically and I am very, very keen to take advantage of some of the uh, advanced functionality I can get out of WordPress. I mentioned online courses before. I'm very keen to run those in the future and I'm going to struggle to do that on my own platform um, with Squarespace. If I was going to run online courses and retain my Squarespace site, I would have to rely on a third-party online course provider like Thinkific or um, U U I don't even know how you say it, Udemy, Udemy, I'm not sure. Um, I'll put links in the show notes. A third-party platform essentially is what I would need. Now, when I referred a moment ago to Squarespace as my own platform, technically it's not. It is like using Thinkific or um, Teachable is the other one that springs to mind for uh, online courses you don't own the platform 
with a Squarespace website, it's owned by Squarespace. Um, you know, if they ceased trading for whatever reason, I'm sure they won't. But if they did, where would your Square, where would your Squarespace site go? Uh, who knows? You're kind of building your platform on someone else's turf. Where, whereas with WordPress, you are paying for your hosting. You have access to all the files, the back end of your website. It's yours. You're building your platform on your own turf. And that's another reason why I've decided to go back to WordPress.org. I mentioned earlier there are two options for WordPress. The second is WordPress.com. So that's a non-self-hosted version of WordPress.org. That's really bad English. Um, it, the hosting of the website is taken care of by WordPress. Again, this sounds like a terrific idea, doesn't it? Except you are building your platform on someone else's turf. So what's a really good idea is if you're looking to develop your techie skills for websites, start off with WordPress.com and then later on you can migrate to WordPress.org once you've developed the confidence to do so. That's certainly an option that I've seen a lot of people take. With WordPress.com, you don't have plugins. Um, you've got limited functionality in, in the back end of the site, but you can create a good looking website nevertheless. It doesn't have the same look and feel as a Squarespace site, but it's definitely a, a functional, attractive site that people will be able to use very easily. On the face of it, WordPress.com is free. However, if you want to attach your own domain to the website, then there's a cost associated there. Also, as with many free things, they do rely on advertising. Uh, at least they did uh, last time I used WordPress.com. There is a cost involved in removing adverts from your site as well. So these are all things that it's worth taking into account. Whereas with WordPress.org, your costs are, generally speaking, your hosting, your domain, and then any other add-ons. For example, if you had a, um, a template which had an, a cost attached to it, you, there are plenty of gorgeous free templates. So you don't necessarily need to allow for that. But it's, it's worth kind of mapping out the various costs before you decide which one to commit to. So that's my two pence worth on Squarespace versus WordPress. I hope that's been helpful. Um, if anyone, if you want to chat to me about it, if you're considering a move, I can't give you the uh, ultimate techie answer. But as someone who is a sort of self-taught semi-confident techie then I might be able to give you a hand so feel free to drop me a line on social media or email me martine at martinellis.com. I'll pop some more detailed articles about WordPress versus Squarespace in the show notes so you can review those at your leisure. That's it from me today thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you'll tune in next time.